Hey everybody, we're back to talk about uh, the World Engine and the Black Zero and how these two things can terraform a planet. The first thing was just, let's connect these two objects together and that's just the simple blue beam that we call the carrier beam. Now Zach talked a lot about, you know, what was gonna happen with a gravity beam sort of pounding away in Metropolis. And we kind of knew that the, par uh, the world engine was gonna spew out particulates, but we didn't really know how the gravity beam and the particulates and all that stuff would work together. It was a, an effect that, de that developed over time. Uh, I found that with all of Zach's cool sci-fi effects ideas, uh, there's, there are some like interesting little offshoots that, that occur in the design and it makes for an interesting looking effect. And one of the things that he brought to me really early on was a reference for a water ring like out in the middle of the desert. And he was thinking maybe that can happen in the Indian Ocean, that there's an area where the gravity is just negated completely and water forms there. And I said, okay, well if that happens there, then the debris in Metropolis should form a similar ring around the black zero. And that way we have two common things. Now, how do those things get there? And that's when we decided, okay, the, the gravity wave works where it, it pounds, but then it travels through the center of the earth and then up the world engine. That's the part that lifts things on the Indian Ocean side, mainly water. And then it goes back through the core of the earth and back up to Metropolis, back up to the Black Zero. That's the part that rips everything off the ground that's not nailed down. In this case, a lot of cars and people and things like that. So imagine stuff's getting lifted up, it gets slammed right back down and flattened, goes through the center of the earth, water gets lifted up, slammed back down into the ground, and it's just forming wave upon wave wherever it's hitting, because these things build up, and that's how you get the radius of the gravity expansion. So I really like that, it, even though it took us months probably to come up with those connected ideas, it created a flow to the event, and Scott Hecker and his guys made the greatest sound effect, I think using a theremin to really drive home the the power of this uh, crazy, uh, it, they call it a weapon, but it's really a tool to manipulate a planet's uh, uh, ecosystem and, and environment. It's up to Soup seeing the Chinook lowering, and then he's going to turn and come into the front. He wants him to see it turn, and then they all come in, and he goes, is that what I think it is? Right. Right? So he kind of comes into that. So you're actually seeing them lower it onto that thing. As you're watching the world engine and you're seeing it unleash its defenses, those defenses are actually the largest scale version of the liquid geo effect that we have in the movie. We decided that, actually Zach decided that that would be a really good defense tool, not just a display uh, mechanism. And uh, it took a long time of looking at the world engine and realizing there's some great spots we could put three large pools of liquid geo in there. And Zach described all the sort of defensive arm motion it could do and that became a really cool Superman robot fight that we could get into the movie. I, all I can say is enjoy it. It's the most frantic, crazy liquid geo Superman fight you'll ever see. Everybody. We need to get out of the building right now. Yeah, and so I, I should have been pushing a little sooner. A little sooner, time. yeah. But nobody on the stairs. No, I want all of you on the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> then he'll go back with you on the rickshaw. So we'll see if we can get you guys, even though you're not, just to stay with you a little longer. You want to stay time. with us as long as possible? As long as you can, oh totally. Plane just crashed and big explosion. And action. Everybody, this way. Come on, this way. I want to slide back in here really quickly, um, briefly tell you what it was like um, shooting the scene's exteriors while, you know, the world is ending. It was uh, fall in Chicago, unseasonably warm, very nice weather. Uh, myself and about 300 background artists all running from one place to another place all day long. But uh, it was a good workout. It was a good workout that day. Um, you know, did a lot of laps that day, <laughs> a lot of laps. And uh, it was great. Zach was very encouraging. Knees took a bit of a beating that day, but for the most part, I think it turned out great. I mean, it certainly looks like the buildings are coming down, when in fact, they were just standing still.